just something we don't like to think about. No one talks about it. No one really wants to address it. My husband's very much don't want to talk about it. No, you're fine. I don't want to talk about my death too much with them because I don't want to make them feel more unhappy. It's even more difficult if you're faced with somebody that you love who's got a diagnosis and then you have to start this conversation. You don't have the language because you've never talked about it. You don't have the familiarity. You don't know how to open the question. In our society, we're often encouraged to plan for our lives, planning for our births, planning for different operations if they need to happen. And also, as an extension of that, starting to plan for our end of life care. And that's increasingly important because more of us have a period where we are dying rather than just suddenly dead. So there's a chance to think about what that period will look like. When those questions are looking back at you and somebody saying, what do you want? It makes you really sit down and think about all the places that you know you might want to have your ashes scattered or whether you want to die in hospital or whether you want to come home and die. You know, what are you going to do with your animals? You know, who's going to look after your husband when you've gone? Families might make the assumption that they will be able to speak on behalf of their loved one. And it's not an automatic thing that they can do that. It's important that they legally nominate a family member by making them a lasting power of attorney for health and welfare. Mm -hmm. The comfort knowing that um, you know, my parents um, have our attorney and they can make those decisions when I'm not able to, rather than a doctor or somebody who doesn't know me very well. Just nudging doctors in the right direction to actually do this, but don't do any more, or this is not what I would have wanted is incredibly helpful. Legally, we can't demand certain treatments, but we can definitely refuse treatments. So people can say they don't want to be resuscitated or they don't want to have artificial nutrition. I think a funeral plan is extremely helpful. Carl had made one, my husband, before he died. So we did know what he wanted in his funeral and what he didn't want. That kind of practical thing was, it was such a comfort to the family. Allow them to grieve for you instead of having to worry about the what ifs. What if we've done this wrong? We don't turn up and say, let's talk about death, or you know, tell me what you want if, um, if I tell you that you're dying. You sent me your advanced care plan booklet and I, I, filled, I filled that in up to a point, although when it came to the, you know, do you want your window open or shut or your light on or, what about your hygiene? I thought, no, I can't even think about that. Um, but it, it, it is simply a case of getting things together so that really, so it's easy for my family. By documenting this information now, you are at the centre and we as professional and your close ones and family will do the best we can to, to make sure you have the care and the preferences you want. It's really important that you tell your GP or your healthcare provider what your preferences are if they relate to medical options. It's important to let your friends and family know where they can find that document if it's in a particular part of your house. Disabled young people don't necessarily want to be focusing on more planning which mm -hmm. is around their illness or their disability. So personally for me I feel like I've spent a lot of time kind of negotiating my health, negotiating the support that I receive, the care that I receive, my diagnoses. And so I want to spend any extra time or extra energy that I have really living and making sure that I'm doing the things which I think are important. Within healthcare these days, there's an expectation, both from healthcare professionals and patients, that people can have a say about what's important to them. However, that can put a lot of pressure on people to make sense of quite a vast array of information and at a time when they actually might want to defer the decision making to someone else. If we have to and you're not able to tell us what you want, we will do what we think is best for you from what we know. It's not a yes you've got a plan or no you haven't, it's it's more of a kind of evolution of thinking. Um, you can revisit them and change them as your life is progressing or as your values are changing. It's a true gift of love because you're, you're taking away that burden. Put your wishes down, 
file away and forget about it and focus on the important bits of living and getting on with life. We insure our house, we insure our cars, we insure our pets. Why are we not insuring ourselves? And nobody's going to say, well, a deal didn't say, what do you want me? Right? Because I did, and it's there on paper. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out these videos next. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video.